this is Sam McLaughlin from Sam McKay Fit. Checking in with you guys. We guys are doing well, doing terrific. It's been a while since I've done like an actual sit down video uh, with you guys. So I thought uh, this might be the perfect opportunity to do that because we are going to be talking about training to failure. Do you train to failure? Do you need to train to failure? Should you be training to failure? And of course, this will cover, you know, the, from the context of beginners, uh, intermediate and advanced. Uh, the reason why I'm breaking this up is because um, I mean, follow me on Instagram. My last uh, block that I just did uh, was very humbling. Um, I got the opportunity to, uh, to train with the fellow RP strength coach, uh, Jared, a uh, few um, weeks ago, right before I started this current, uh, this last uh, mental cycle that I just finished. And training with him, it, it kind of just put a lot of things in perspective. I do train relatively hard, but uh, is it consistent? Like, are you just moving the weight or are you actually training? Um, you know, I went from, if you follow me, again, if you follow me on Instagram, post a lot of distance on Instagram, I was going from like hack squats, so I'll be doing seven plates on each side uh, for a rep of like, you know, seven and a half on my overreaching week compared to training with him when I was on five and I was on reps in like in a 12 rep, rep range and I actually felt a little more task doing lighter weight. Uh, yes, relatively more repetition, but cleaner form. Uh, that kind of just put a lot of things in perspective. Like, you know, okay, I was I just interested in just moving the weight, or was I just actually interested in putting myself in an hypertrophic uh, state or training hypertrophically, um, if that's a word, <laughs> uh, to make sure I am actually putting myself in a position to actually gain some lean, uh, lean tissue. And that just actually, you know, I sort of revamp uh, my uh, training protocol a little bit. And this last box was just money. And I get a lot of questions uh, a lot. Uh, from a lot of you guys on through Instagram on here sometimes on uh, when should you be training uh, when should you not be training really hard when should you be training extra really hard it's all gonna be dependent on your level and experience of training I personally I think I made a video uh, a few weeks back talking about you know RIR and RPEs and RP scale and RIR skill to judge how you know you should train or to program your, you actually are trying to, you know, put yourself into, um, you know, your lean, lean gains or whatever gaining phase that you are, uh, you want to put yourself in. Uh, you should be using some sort of like, you know, pre linear periodization uh, tactics or, or, or concept to make sure you put yourself in a position where week to week you are challenging yourself and slowly progressing in your lift. Same thing goes for training. So if you're interested in that video, you know, maybe I'll put a link in the description. You can definitely check that out. But what we're talking about is should you be training to failure? When I'm seeing training failure, I know a lot of people, you know, the Greg sets out there because apparently he's the authority on everything, in training and nutrition. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of younger guys just, you know, go uh, towards that video and just like, you know, take everything they're saying and never, you know, truly put, put themselves in a position to critically think for them for themselves. Um, some content are helpful. Some content, I think it's just a lot of, you know, bullshit with that context. I think, and he knows it too. He's just trying to get clicks. Uh, in my opinion, it's not a shot fight at him. I'm just thinking it's not the uh, the aficionado on everything training intensity and uh, and nutrition. Anyways, back to the point I was trying to make. Should, and by the way, when I'm when I'm talking through this video, uh, I'll be overlaying my last overreaching. Uh, what I mean, like session, I mean uh, hack squad. Uh, just because uh, a lot of times when I post videos on um, on Instagram, or YouTube, so it's like snips. And when I, the videos I post on YouTube is usually my last set because it's a way for my psyching myself up to make sure I actually go for it. So as I get started in this video, I'll be overlaying um, the video me train without any cut it's just straight up raw and you actually see how many reps how many sets how hard each set work because i can pull a post out there to be my first set. oh my it's my you know, fourth set oh uh, so hard and people will false flag that i always post my last set just because i think it's challenging and if it's not my last set i'll put in a caption saying this is my top set first set etc because i think a lot of people need that context and i'm just not posting shit just to look quote unquote good i'm actually posting stuff on uh my g uh just to you know hopefully uh, encourage you guys and you guys see the way i actually train anyways let's get into the topic should you be training to failure it's going to be dependent on the kind of person that you are if you're a beginner i would suggest no because a lot of times um you don't even know what failure is and even uh, for me from i mean even me being advanced i've been training for 13, 14, 16 years. I've been training since 2003. Uh, working out since 2003, training since 2007. Um, it's still a lot of times, it's still hard for me to uh, you know, get to that point of what I'm training to failure. Because one, especially when it comes to legs, for instance, a lot of us would 
or rather, you know, give yourself, give ourselves an out uh, when we train on legs just because, let's be honest, legs sucks. It's brutal, it hurts. Anytime I train legs with Jared and we always look at each other, why do we do this again? Because it's not fun sometimes. But sometimes though, you know, the, the hard, the, the dig, the, the, the euphoria that comes up onto you, that comes on you, pause. <laughs> the euphoria that you get from training um, legs hard it's you know it's on match compared to any other body type just because such a dominant muscle group alone and i think that's that's awesome but back to my point uh so sometimes i can see i've seen some of the few trainings that i've done in the past I actually give myself an out just because it was hard i look over like videos and clips and also by the way you should be recording your video you should be recording your workouts just to see in your head at the moment in the moment you might think you're doing like rp of eight and you watch it again it's like ah i think i had like four more uh and of course when it comes to legs too like for instance I mean, no, I wouldn't say I recommend going to failure on like a movement like, you know, uh, back squat, for instance, just because you are putting yourself in the risk of a lot of injuries. Uh, things like hack squat, leg extensions, uh, leg presses, you know, yes, you can, you know, you can go there. And, you know, RP of like nine and 10 on, on back squats. Yes, it's possible, but, you know, you are, I will, you know, it's possible. You want to go there, you want to reach, but training to failure, ideally, you know, ideally I want to, you know, manage, um, movements that that i'm that i'm doing a little bit better when it comes to like machine movements uh movements are going to put them in place to actually uh work on the local fatigue meaning i'm actually feeling the fatigue in my legs not my low and, and it's not a systemic fatigue meaning it's not my lower back that's just been shot uh you know you in training like that uh putting myself in the position to train to failure and i think if you see a lot of people that are training out there rarely we just anybody back squat until failure it's a lot of you know machine movements pressing chest rest movement they typically would do to uh, train to failure and they might think they want to train to failure on like a back squat but you typically have you know from i mean only to my true failure no you don't you probably could have like at least one more left in a in a tank but um yes yeah, so the machine that i'm training on is a hack squat so for me personally i try to uh overreach i try to empty the tank it's gonna suck you're gonna puke it might black out a little bit again that's the demented side of like just training hard or training with intensity uh, so for beginners i would not encourage uh you to train to failure uh train close to failure a lot of times you don't even know where your failure is so there's a two sides to it i guess uh, you can train in like such try and train to failure so you can understand what that you know what your thresholds are but a lot of times for newbie you can get away you know passing you know the you know 65 percent of you like you know your potential one rate max that's going to stimulate some sort of growth i mean you can touch you know you can touch a bar and you know you get some you know you get some uh, stimulus going on i mean it's not that easy i'm just saying like for newbies it's not that hard for you to like you know you can turn into you know rp7 and 8 and you can get away with that for intermediate when you pass that sort of newbie games how like the two two year two three year mark um that might be that you know then it's time for you to actually try and find what that failure or what that threshold is um again from beginning to immediate you must still get away with like training that are that rp of eight uh obviously if you put yourself in a position you know your nutrition nutritionally you put yourself in a surplus the nutrition your, your nutrition aids and applies to the goal that you're trying to you know achieve which is to get lean tissue and you actually train uh, let's say an rp of eight to nine uh true eight to nine but in your head you think thinking you rp of call jesus as i call it uh 10 uh when you actually look at a video you're like ah uh, you know that's not an rp of nine you you potentially could still get uh you know some gain you can make some gains in that area and what i think it's important for any athletes out there uh to be constantly or progressively uh chasing after that you know that one week where you're going to be overreaching um it's for uh advanced athlete like me um a lot of athletes are advanced. You've been training for five, six years. Um, you already passed that newbie gains. Um, it's going to be harder and harder for you to get lean tissue. So you want to make sure you're refining everything that you're doing in the gym. Uh, you're refining your movement cues. You're refining, uh, you know, your training. You're, you're making sure your recovery is on point. Uh, you're making sure you put yourself in a very in a nutritional state uh, to make sure uh, your body it can build new tissue, aka being a surplus and not trying to always go for lean gains. Uh, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with lean gains, but I'm just saying, like, for somebody who's older, uh, you want to put yourself in a position where your body, it's going to be harder for your body to actually get lean tissue anyways because you're older, you've been doing this for a while. So why not put yourself in the most optimal place, meaning you're properly fed nutrition-wise and you're not just teetering over, teetering over that, you know, 
deficit uh, or maintenance for the sake of quote unquote lean gains. Um, so if you're an advanced um, athlete, you're an advanced trainer, you're an advanced lifter, you definitely want to make sure you are training as consistent as possible and trying to give yourself periodically that overreaching week, which typically is before a deload. Um, a lot of times again, I mean, when you, when you watch, when I, when I watch videos back and I'm like, ah, I don't know, like, you know, those are my, the overreaching weeks are, you know, it's accumulated over time. It gets to the point you're reaching and that's where you want to empty the tank because potentially after that week, it's a, as it should be, it should be a deload. I am currently in a deload right now, which I am super excited for. My body's wrecked and, uh, I am. I am enjoying my first day of deload. I'm going to be deloading for the rest of the week. So if you actually put yourself in a position to overreach and you put yourself in a position to, uh, you know, train to failure, um, and you should be looking forward to a deload week. Uh, if you get to deload week, it's like, ah, you know, I can probably go for like another week. Ah, you probably didn't overreach. You probably didn't reach as hard as you should, or you thought you should, or as hard as you should be doing. Um, you know, there's, you know, training, every day a lot of people say they train to fill it every day but potentially you don't train you don't train to fill it every day because there is almost impossible it's almost impossible for your body for you to train to failure every day and you actually for you to recover uh, you might think you're training to failure but potentially you might just be training like an rp of like eight and you have a little bit left in the tank it's almost impossible for your central nervous system to come in constantly train uh to failure from week to week to week to week and also there's some you know uh, side effects to that potential injury you can hurt yourself uh when you train to failure over and over again because one you ego lifting for the sake of training to failure so why not put yourself progressing in the spot to progressively overload over time meaning it to the increase your sets or increase the weight that you're using um for the from, from a week-to-week -week basis uh or train another rp skill or an rir skill from week to week and let's say it's like a five it's a five it's a four to five week block uh on maybe the sixth week or the fifth week being a deload on your fourth or fifth week that's when you should be overreaching that's when you be emptying the tank training to failure um potentially then we all know i know this for a fact when i have somebody spotted me it's easier for me to train to failure so i know it can be a lot harder uh to train to failure uh, when those overreaching weeks are here when you're training by yourself especially with movements like let's say bench press or uh you know dumbbells you can dump it if you can't go anymore uh squats you can't really yes you can dump it but you know you potentially don't want to put yourself in a position where you can hurt yourself but depending on your programming your leg extensions line leg curls um um, RDLs, you know, things like that. You know, yeah, you might potentially be, you might be able to overreach. Uh, if you are going to be overreaching on squat, make sure you have a spot. So, uh, yes, I know this, you know, it's kind of just all over the place. Uh, this video that I make, it's not really structured by any means. It's no teleprompter. Uh, it's points that I have in my head. I want to convey to you guys as you guys are, you know, obviously going training, uh, you know, going about your training program, whatever training program you're doing, make sure, uh, your program is aligned in a progressive manner. Make sure your program is aligned to have a week where it's going to be overreaching. It's going to be tasking. You're going to be pretty much shutting down your central nervous system for that week. Um, you know, to the point where that's the spot, that's the sweet spot you want to be at to make sure you are growing and not just teetering over, you know, just coast. You don't want to coast when you're training. You have your time is very, it's too valuable for you to spend time in the gym and just, you know, be wasting it by just coasting, by just, you know, doing RPF eight over and over again. Theoretically, if you do RPF eight um, and you, you know, keep in increasing the load, obviously the reps might be dropping because the load is climbing up. It's going to be more difficult for you. Uh, and if you are in a position where you are increasing the load and you're still climbing in rep repetitions, maybe uh, you're not truly, you know, at that good, at that bright RP um, skill. That is all I have uh, for you guys for today. And hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Uh, I'm not sure how long the overlay video is gonna be. Um, if it's still going, I'm gonna let it play out. If it's not, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, comment, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I haven't done this video, I haven't sit down video in quite some time. And I think a lot of videos I've been doing, it's just been training and training and training. So I just wanna keep that moving. And I think I, I'm not sure when this video is gonna be live. I have a full grocery haul uh, coming for you guys. Um, in near future, or you might have already seen this already, depending on how I put this video out. So yeah, appreciate you guys been writing uh, for this video. Appreciate you guys for the content, uh, con the the content feedback. Um, 
if you like this kind of videos um let me know i'll make more of them i'll see you guys in the next one